Welcome to Pathworking the Tree of Life with the Alchemical Kabbalah. This week, we are entering the path of Taith, the secret of all spiritual activities. The letter Taith means serpent. Most specifically, it means royal serpent. So, hmm. okay. So, the royal serpent that's referred to in this key we see the Christ speaking about this intelligence and this being and the master Jesus refers to it and he, as he says as Moses lifted the serpent in the wilderness so must the son of man be lifted up and from the Book of Formation, we read, the 19th path is the intelligence of the secret of all the activities of the spiritual beings and is so-called because of the influence diffused by it from the most high and exhausted sublime glory. The 19th path is called the secret of all spiritual activities. Now, who can tell me again what the number 19 tarot key is? Anyone? What's Straight. the key? Pardon me? The, the tarot key number 19. Oh, sorry. Someone besides Margo. Sun. Perfect. Thank you. Is that Victoria? All right. So, yes, the 19th tarot key is called the sun. And the sun key in the Western tradition is the heart chakra. Remember last week when we were discussing key nine, we were discussing becoming a measurer of mercy. So to do this, to become, to be in the world, a measurer of mercy, one must know and practice the secret of all spiritual activities. Well, the intellect and the mind is going to immediately say, well, what is that? It's very cryptic, right? Well, this isn't the kind of thing that can just be answered right, with words. And if it is answered with words, it's, it's, it's not it. But what it really is will be more and more revealed to you as you work with this key for this week's path in your core practice. In essence, we're discussing the skillful use of suggestion in the language of the subconscious mind. This is shown very clearly in the strength key, but it's seldom obvious to the self-conscious. Here's something really very interesting to note about the tarot keys. As we pathwork and immerse ourselves in them, 
In order to master a path or a key, you must master the path before it. This happens over time, right? This, like in our first class, we discussed this is a life path. This isn't like you, you take one class on this key and you got it. But over time, with immersion in the keys, one becomes more and more skillful in implementing the inner faculties and the inner visualizations. And we begin to learn what cannot be taught as we grow and unfold spiritually. As we do this, more and more of the inner worlds become accessible to our self-conscious mind. So everyone, please just get comfortable. Take some deep abdominal breaths. Center on your core abdomen. And I want you to just focus right here on the letter T. And it's imagery, breathe it in and out and in and out and stare intently at the image before you. As you stare at the image and breathe out, breathe the image in deeply and close your eyes and continue to breathe. And then as you breathe out, open your eyes again and just breathe the image in and out. When you close your eyes, I want you to see the after image of the letter tape as clearly as you can. You're not straining. You're just relaxing and you're allowing that image to just float gently in your consciousness, in your retinal field. I want everyone to get a really good sense of this if you don't have it already. This is one of the most powerful practices you can do in path working with tarot. This is why we end our core practice on the letter themselves. This image has evolved over time and has been held in the mass consciousness for a very, very, very long time. Okay, breathing in and out deeply. If you haven't already, let the image float in your inner vision. Do so now. And just know that this image will reemerge for you at a later time with gifts from the self. Okay. So, as we do, whenever you're ready, please everyone unmute yourselves one at a time and share what comes to you for our key for this week, the strength key, the number eight key of the royal path. I don't remember the light colored roses. Oh. The white ones. You don't? Mm -hmm. Okay. That's weird. Right? It's a little weird. Okay. How could I have missed those? I'm not sure. <laughs> You're not alone. You yeah. don't remember that either? No. They're not okay. on the cards. Yes, I know. Are on this card. I'm aware. Is, it gives it a nice feminine How's soft. This? No, I, <laughs> I like the roses. Okay. <laughs> Good. So here's our actual home key without any alterations. 
please share one at a time what speaks to you about this key. What speaks to me is the two infinity signs, the one above her head and then the one with the roses. Ah. I didn't realize that the roses were made to an, an infinity sign till this time, I don't think. That is an awesomely wonderful pickup, Sue. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. It is a figure eight of roses around her. And the lion. She has complete control over the lion. She is dominant over the lion. And he's like totally, yeah, um, just under her power, put it that way. And he's full of act, you know, I mean, just because he's bright red like that, you know, he could jump into action with the red meaning action. Um, yeah. But he has them totally under her control. Yeah, she's, she's very serene, very calm. She's not working. <laughs> right. That's that set that's that suggestion scenario. Right. How powerful is that? I mean, she has tamed a red lion with a wreath of roses. But it's not just the red roses, it's love. And he feels that. Yes. Right. The color yellow is reflected in his eyes. Mm. The background. Mm -hmm. He's comfortable. He has all this power and he's very comfortable mm -hmm. and then he has those little white teeth so that's you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah he's got those God slips in everywhere <laughs> right i also think he's happy he's so happy he yeah. does look happy he's yeah, like yeah. smiling isn't he mm -hmm. yeah and the, and the white teeth kind of like reminds me of the um the deceiver key where he's got the white goatee. You know, it all looks one way, but actually it's not. It's creation. Nice. They need each other. Yes. Very mm -hmm. much. They're dependent on each other. Yeah. They're Excellent so, they're observation. Like, they are like one. They like almost look like one. That's a great, not great, like, great observation. Like she's coming out of the top of his head almost like. Hmm? Yeah. Very nice. I don't see dominance in there. There's no dominance. Well, it's love, right? Yeah. It's like Sue. Was it Sue? Didn't you say? Sue. Yeah, Sue. Mm -hmm. The what what's what's in control here is real love, not what mm -hmm. the world usually tells us, you know, that is. She makes suggestions. Right. She doesn't tell you what to do. She mm -hmm. says, oh, if you'd like to do this, oh, you could do that. Right. Like you're talking to your lover. Mm. It's a reciprocal relationship. Oh, let's try this out. Mm. Right? And that's how we learn. Mm -hmm. um, has everyone seen Beauty and the Beast? Tale as old as time, yes. <laughs> song as old as rhyme. Right? Very long time ago. This is that story, right? This is that story in all of us, right? It's a beautiful, beautiful story.
Her hands and feet are hidden. That's a great observation. What do you make of that? Uh, she doesn't need 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 them. Maybe. <laughs> okay. Right. Yeah, she's kind right. of flo floating, and um, yeah. So the power here is, like Margot said, suggestion, which is the power of mind. Right. It it brings back the the um hanged man card, mm -hmm. the suspended man. His hands are behind his back, so we don't see his hands. Right. Same here, her hands. That was a great observation. Her hands are not apparent. She's creating with her mind. Yes. But I see a very strong uh, representation of power, um, that the four feet are all on the green, and her mm -hmm. feet are on the green. They're on a stable yes beginning this is this is a, the key of power and strength i mean it's literally named strength would you say this is showing the will and the recognition of the will or the will in action say i think you said it beautifully jesse um, why, why, I think I know why, but you tell me why you would say that. So, um, if you look at the, the lion's tail, it's got the serpent like shape, which shows that it's one aspect of the triple flame, like the, um, okay. like in the sense of it's half of the whole, but then the. The other aspect would be, you know, the, the seed within the seed. Okay. So, um, what I'm, what I'm getting at is the, the lion represents the, the will being, um, executed at that level or at that particular location. Um, and the, the white robed woman represents the will in some sense, like, uh, well, she's, she's wearing white, right? All white, which on the tree is what? The crown. And on the simple tree, which is the, um, the divine life, divine life. Okay. On the simple tree, it's the divine self self, right? The crown. Okay. Which is, okay. do you remember the number one statement of truth about the self? Who can state that? I am a center of expression for the primal will to good, which eternally creates and sustains the universe. Perfect. Thank you. Yes, you are. And that's where you get the divine will. Right. So she's in all white. So she is wearing the center of expression for the primal will to good, which her eternally hands, creates. Yes. Her hands are the lion. Nice. I like where you're going with that. And what is the red spear on the tree? That's the um, strength, the uh, yes. volition. That's right. Action, which is exactly what you just said most simply. You see the will of the self in action, right? You can see the lion's eyes as if she's, the suggesting is is the aiming of that particular, mm. the, where the lion's looking is being yep. guided by her hands, you, would, you might think in this particular. And if you look at his eyes, um, it looks like there's white ovals in each eye okay i don't but maybe that's just the way the image is looking but that's kind of what i saw when i looked at that okay her arms kind of remind me of the one arm of the anubis that was looked like that just hanging behind mm -hmm. 
the wheel. Yeah. Right. Are you still seeing her? Mm -hmm. What's showing now? Okay. Anyone? What so are you the, seeing on the screen? Kundalini. Hmm? It's the Kundalini serpent. Okay. Fine. It's the ass. Right. It's the uh, the. And lion's now tail. On, in the tail. Yes. So who said the Kundalini? Who said that? Christy. Okay. Thank you, Christy. Yes. This is the key of the Kundalini. You see it down here. Whom does such a great job right here? See the little serpent right here? This is the royal serpent, right? This is what is on the headdress of the, the kings and queens of Egypt, right? The rulers. Mm -hmm. This is the life force, mm -hmm. the one life force that animates everything. Mm -hmm. The serpent's head in that letter is a flame, it seems. That's a nice observation. See what you're saying there? Yes. Down here, you see the little symbol of Leo. That looks like a serpent too, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. See it? The head. Yeah. Looks like a serpent kind of draped over. And you see the T down here, the little cross. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Interesting. So it, the the wreath of eternity, which is around the lion and her, is yeah. love peppered with the will in the roses mm. it's like yeah that's that's just what i'm saying like the I green love, love yes. and the red is the activity of the will and it's peppered all throughout eternal, I, but around both of them yes the feminine mm -hmm. i don't know can that be masculine i mean the line is definitely a you know yeah power this so the masculine yeah I love how the lion is lit up, like like Margot talked about the eyes. Look at look mm -hmm. at how those eyes are glowing, just filled with light. And the claws are extended. Yes. Yeah. So that's a good point, right? What 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 do you make of that? <laughs> you ever hear the saying, get a grip? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Re ready yeah. to pounce. Yeah. But it, the green grass is, it's the color of Venus is green. So mm -hmm. it's the whole foundation of this relationship is love, just as right. Gabba said. Yes, it is. Now, don't underestimate. <laughs> don't, this is for anyone ever watching this video. Mm -hmm. Do not ever underestimate the power of this key mm -hmm. that is that is accessible in this path. This is this is nature in what is it in red tooth and claw. You know, we are talking just raw will to live power. This is the power that brings new life into the world. I feel like the card can be read a couple of different ways. Mm -hmm. uh, in that, like you're looking at the, the woman sort of taming the, that lion instinct, you know, mm -hmm. that, that yep. passionate, you know, fiery instinct. Um, yes. And she's taming him, and that's one way to look at it. And then the other way is that, you know, she's she's got the white gown, and she's sort of like, you know, going to stand for truth. She's going to stand for wisdom, and mm. she's drawing on the strength of the lion to maybe have to stand alone, to maybe have to walk a path that um, she needs some inner strength 
in the face of, you know, something different or um, that she's going to stand for truth, even if that means standing by herself. And she can do that because she's got that, that inner fire, you know, um, that's going to project her forward to be able to stand, you know, that passion for truth and for wisdom. Mm. Nice. Thank you. Eli, do you recall when we discussed the moon key the last time we, um, we identified the figure eight that's, that was revealed between the two towers? You know, oh, yeah. that was the lower uh-huh. aspect. There was the womb there, and then there was the upper yeah. aspect, which was the moon. You see that pattern here in this key as well, where the womb would be where the lion's face is. That's where the seed was going. Do you remember on that path? Yes, I love what you're going with this. Keep going. So that seed represents consciousness in, you know, where consciousness is expressing itself. Uh Uh-huh. And so as you go down that path to that womb, it starts to, to, to unfold. And that's where you see it sort of expressing itself through the, the keys here as we're going through the so that womb is now um the if you look at this key the 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 lower aspect of the figure eight where the lion's face is yep would be the that seed having matured in the womb Mm -hmm. very cool jesse so to to add to what you're saying, um, I was just reading Jewels of the Wise on just browsing over Taith, and it mentions something real similar to what you're talking about, about how this key is is Leo, which is the solar being, right, the sun of the zodiac signs, and it follows. Uh, the hermit, which is Virgo, the virgin, the womb. So you're seeing the solar activity and life force within the womb. When you see Leo followed by Virgo. Right. Which which is another way of what you're saying. Mm -hmm. And yes, this is the alchemical process for us, right? There, you know, there's so much going on in this key. Um, so much going on. Um, so if you have cats, you know how they're really happy to see you when their tail goes up. They'll walk towards you and their tail will go up. That's that's how you know they're excited. They're really super, super it, happy to see. It twitches a little bit. It goes <laughs> up and then it, the tip. Yeah, yeah, it does that. That's right. It's yeah. cute. It's cute. So it's interesting where the lion's tail comes up on the back of Lady Strength here. Right up in here. You guys see this? Yeah. There's no accidents in any of the keys. Find it interesting too, the two trees in the background here. Kind of mirroring each other. And then of course the purple mountain, we know mountains are symbols of attainment. And that would be linked to foundation, right? The moon key. Yeah, right. Because it's purple. Sure. Absolutely. She has buds up here like a crown. But they're flowering. Right. They're in flower. Exactly. So there are... Yep. 
what so, is what yeah, is but, what is coming to me is that um she doesn't look quite alive like by herself there if she didn't have that lion it's like the lion is what gives her life and animation and movement but she just literally does not look like she looks like a robot almost okay so what i feel from this is that that is the thing that gives her body the life Okay. You're seeing it expressed through the lion, right? Yeah. Mm, interesting. You know, there are only two two characters in the whole arcana, the major arcana, only dressed in white. Only two. Lady Strength. Does anyone know the other one? Temperance, Michael. Thank you. Temperance. Yep. Yep. It's the Holy Guardian Angel in Key 14, Temperance, or, or Michael, the Archangel. Mm -hmm. And they're both middle paths on the tree. Temperance is the middle path on the middle pillar, and this is the middle path on the horizontal. Planes. Does anyone remember? Let's. Oh, we'll get to that in a minute. Anyone else want to share on the key before we move forward? I think it's worth noting. Just a quick thought on that. She's she's using her both of her arms are acting as. The same, you know, two aspects of the same transmission line, if you will. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's, she's not just putting one arm in; she's putting two, right, arms in the mane of the lion. In. Yes, in the mane, exactly. And has them in complete control. You know, you remember? Does everyone see the subtlety of the crescent in the teeth? See that? Now, what's the top uh, of the crescent? Does anyone remember? Water. Thank you. Water, the element of water. And of course, the lion is fire. So we have the teaching again. The water is in the fire. The fire is in the water. This lion is our life drives, our passions, our everything that animates us. And she's in perfect control. Look, this level of control, Starlet, from some From a certain perspective of consciousness, having this type of control over the animal nature would almost sometimes appear like robotic. Almost. I forget which teacher said that the more control one gains over the The, the nature of the vehicles we inhabit, that the movements almost seem uh, like, like robotic. But it's not without life. It's, it's, it's hard to articulate, really. It has to really just be experienced from that level. She's completely at ease. She's at rest. She's not working, like I said no. earlier. Right. She's not, she is at rest. She's at ease. She's still. Mm. When we get still, then we can hear the this inner self. Nice. Yes. So she's not doing anything. She's in the state of knowing that this works. Excellent.
So that's why she doesn't, you can't see her hands because she's not doing it just like with the, the illumination and the um, suspended man. He's that's just there. Being. So, she's being. being. Yeah, Nancy. Yes. First, yeah, being. Yes, yes. And she is a pure being. She's an all in white. This is to be pure is to be is it's in al in alchemy purity isn't like some morality type of thing it's it means without admixture to be one element is to be one element she is the pure will right of self that's it and it's flowing through her, perfectly controlling and raising, raising the power inherent within the animal nature. She took what the magician had and built upon it, you know, because it started yes. with Moses and the figure eight infinity mm. above the head. I love it. Yeah, right, Victoria. So, I well, I think what you're saying is she took the roses above the magician and the ones below them and wove them together, right? Yeah, but also the concentration. He yes. had the concentration and the focus, and yes. now it's she's taken it to the next level, built upon what he started with his focus. Exactly, exactly. But she's yep. perfected it more. Exactly. Yes, great observation. And on the tree of life, uh, the, the simple tree, You, she's on the higher mental plane. I'm so glad you said that. And it's coming from me memory. She's going from memory over to volition. That she remembers. So great. And moves from that point. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Yes, Margo, you 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 are ahead of the game. <laughs> <laughs> you noticed. It's good. I'm getting that simple tree down. <laughs> I am so proud of you. If, and no, I'm serious. It, you guys, if you have not memorized the simple tree, do yourself a favor. Memorize the simple tree. Um, and know it by heart. It's not not that difficult. The, the planes of being in in very simple terms. What's showing on your screen right now? Is it still a strength? Yep. Okay, great. All right. Anyone else before we move forward? Okay. All right. So, moving forward, we're going to talk a little bit more about this measure of mercy, which is the hermit key. Okay. And in most simple terms, in the Western tradition, what the hermit shows is the adept. It's the, uh, the aspirant who has reached a certain level in their spiritual development where they are clear channels for the will. Like, like Jesse brought up that she's the will in action. But to, to become this bearer of the light, you must master this key, the strength key. Now, to do that, you simply immerse yourself in it repeatedly. The keys, the self speaks directly to you through them and gives you exactly the experience you need to evolve and bring this forth through you 
Not that you're not already doing this because you already actually are. It's just how, how aware are we of, of the life force working through us and our cooperation with it? In this key, everyone comes to challenges to master the animal drives and passions that we all have. Every practice that you employ with love and consistency will pay off over time. One of my best teachers has always advised me, particularly regarding this key, but in the spiritual path, to always <laughs> be gentle, but firm with yourself. This balance between mercy and severity. It's interesting, mastering the path of taste, strength, we we reach a certain level at it, and then we realize that we need to master key seven to get a better grasp of the intelligence of key eight. Key seven is the chariot, right? Where the self is rising up in the vehicles and controlling the passion desires of like, don't like, with the reins of mind. It's really beautiful how the keys all help shape and reinforce our spiritual evolution and develop. The more we progress and experience each of the keys within ourselves, the more light they shed on the others. The, the way to do this most efficiently is through the core practice. The Emerald Tablet states, thou shalt separate subtle from the gross, suavely and with great ingenuity. The subtle from the gross. One way of looking at that is Where you place your consciousness, are you placing it on the, the appearances of the world? Or are you placing it on the inner images that you hold within your awareness? The subtleties. The master said, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. The 19th path, Taith, is the path of purity of the heart. Again, purity in alchemical speak means simply without admixture. It isn't about norms or social constructs of what's good or bad. It's about what you desire, what you will, what you want completely. In most simple terms, this means holding one desire above all else. Imagine what that might be like for you to have just one desire and only one that you didn't want anything but this one thing more than anything. Okay, let that go. Imagine what it would be like taking all of your desires and weaving them into a chain of roses. All of them. And just let your subconscious do that for you. 
This key will help you do that. And this key will then, if you will allow the self, will then wrap those, those roses around all of your nature and then raise all of that life to the higher mental plane. The zodiac sign of this key is Leo, which rules the heart. We've already discussed how the sun rules the whole solar system of orbs. And the sun key, the number 19, is the key, to the heart center in the Western tradition. Who remembers what this is? Anyone remember this? Tell me what this is. I was seriously just thinking about that exact thing. Beautiful. I forget the name of it, though. Okay, perfect. It's okay. I'm glad, but you are definitely in tune. Um, anyone else recall the name of this little symbol figure? The analemma. Perfect. Thank you, Jesse. That is one name of it. Yes, the analemma. Anna, just meaning annual, right? Like yearly, right? And lemma, like luminescent, which we see above Lady Strength. So this is the over the Temple Apollo, okay? And this is an actual, uh, an artist, uh, a photographer. I, I apologize, I don't know their name to quote them, but they took this series of images and photographs of the sun at the same time of day throughout the year for a whole year. And this is pretty consistent around the world. It's such a fascinating uh, thing to ponder of how the ancients knew this. How did they know that this symbol was formed in the sky by the sun. If you like, this, you don't have to, but you might consider doing this yourself, wherever you are in the world. I mean, there's, I don't, haven't counted these, but you would only have to do it like once a week or once every two weeks, go out, set up a camera in the same place and just take a picture of the sun, certain time of, just make sure it's the same time of day throughout the year. You can make your own uh, composite image of an analemma. So what's interesting is the subconscious and our collective subconscious knows this pattern. It knows it. We don't know it consciously, right, until it's pointed out to us. But our subconscious lives in this. This is how, this is the vast intelligence of our subconscious mind. This is, and it shows the power of the sun in this pattern. And it also shows us how if we develop our own patterns of repetition and rhythm by doing either prayer, meditation, uh, ritual, communion, whatever it is that is our spiritual practice, when we do it with consistency over time, we replicate this exact pattern. And that, in that way, we bridge heaven and earth. We bring patterns of the macrocosm into a microcosm. And this is the power of the sun into action in our life. And we're grounding that pattern above to the below. Now, 
Just a quick word of encouragement for everyone participating here and anyone that might be following. No matter where you are on the path, all the work that you've been doing towards your own spiritual aspirations, particularly in this class with Tara and Kabbalah, it's building momentum within you. And it will continue to build momentum and bring you spiritual growth and light for years and even lifetimes to come. So that's good news. And it's a good thing to remember to help you in the times that sometimes seem difficult, like we all have. But to just keep doing the work, keep doing the work. The red lion is the raw force of nature. Most specifically, it's our animal nature. You know, how many how many people got their their claws done this week? <laughs> right. Every emotion and feeling that is not in resonance with the bliss and love of the divine self is simply material for transmutation. So face all fears and all desires as they are. Bring them into your, your chain of roses. Don't push them. Don't suppress them. Don't think that they should be something that else. Don't, if you catch yourself stuck in a judgment of the world, of this is bad, this is wrong, to feel this way or have this feeling or desire, just note it for what it is. This is how I feel. I feel this way. Okay. Embrace it. Don't suppress it. And then breathe deeply as you focus on the strength key. Then a lot, this allows the superconscious light that is everywhere to deeply saturate, penetrate all of your vehicles down to the very flesh of the animal nature body. Let all inner urges and desires be what they are without trying to change them into something else. Let them come. Allow the self to, tr to weave them in and raise them. When you hold the letter Taith and the strength key in your inner vision, in the core practice, you are giving instruction to the subconscious to transmute all of these powers and forces and to raise this one life. In this way, higher planes become more accessible to our self-conscious awareness. And we initiate alchemical responses that build on our inner subtle bodies. Margo, our overachiever, brought up where she is on the tree right here. She connects mercy or memory to volition, severity. She's the balance between them. Again, it's the middle path on the horizontal plane. And on the simple tree, I was going to ask who remembers, but Margo already brought it up, so I'll show this. And if you haven't memorized this tree, memorize the tree. This is a simple tree. Okay? This will pay off huge dividends for you down the road. This is the higher mental plane. Now, to the intellect, that's just 
a word or uh, three words, right? But when you find yourself waking up more and more on the inner planes and working, you'll start to get a feel for where specifically this is for you. And you'll start to discern that it's up here that you are much closer to the causal plane and the spiritual plane. But it's up here at the higher mental plane. This is a lot going on up here. Let's just say that. You know the saying, nothing new under the sun, right? Was that Ecclesiastes, I think? Not sure. Something Old Testament. But one interpretation of that is that everything that occurs below the sun has already happened up here. This is why we aim for the heart and the highest place on the tree we can. Because we want to be active participants consciously in the creation in the co-creation of life, not just witnessing it and experiencing the effects of it in the, in the lower planes of the tree. Question. Yeah. Um, it's just hitting me as I'm looking this at this. Um, so before, okay, so when you get to the high, above the, into the higher mental plane, you become aware because before, I mean, lower in the plane, would you say you weren't really aware of your desire, nature, and the actions you were taking versus when you get to that higher mental plane, you're realizing that when you're being tempted and so you're starting to become very aware of this polarity balance thing. Does that make sense, what I'm saying? Because it feels yes, like- Yes, I'm with you. I'm with you. It, it feels like now you're freaking aware of this thing that when they come. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. Excellent. Yes. Excellent, Starlet. So, yes, I could go on and on, but I'll just leave it with yes. Where you're, where you're, where you're getting that from, where that is speaking to you from within Go more in that direction. Listen to that. Yeah. And me everyone memorize this tree. It's it's such a useful tree for our Western mind. It it it's it's a beautiful bridge to help us bring in all of the archaic um, ways of expressing these uh, realities to a more tangible a uh, way that we're normally how how we have developed to process what we call reality okay but it's all all within you when we make progress on this key in this path the higher mental plane becomes simply more accessible to the self-conscious mind it's that simple and there are great beings here great great beings helping us do this the more we allow the superconscious self to control our animal drives through the subconscious doing this allowing this and then experiencing it is one way of expressing the secret of all spiritual activities but we simply must put it into action. How do we do this? Do the core practice. Just do the core practice. The self will show you how. As you do the core practice this week, whatever is needed to be dealt with will present itself to you, either within or without or both. Just remember to be gentle and firm with yourself and then observe what happens.
and and I want you to listen to yourself when it comes to um how to explore once you as you find yourself doing your core practice. So I'm gonna give you a couple examples. One technique you might wish to explore with the strength key is to hold the imagery of the key and focus on one rose at a time in your inner vision. Who knows how many roses are on the whom strength key? Yes, Starlet? There's 10 there around, I think. Yes, that is correct. There are 10. And how convenient is that? So, okay. right? So what might you recite as you're going through each rose? The pattern on the trestle board. Oh, perfect. Lovely. Okay. <laughs> that, so that's one wonderful uh, example If it uh, that I highly recommend you do. Um, another one that some people might want to do if, if you are so inclined, there are some people who enjoy, uh, practicing, um, a particular rosary recitation. In Kabbalah, there's a Kabbalistic rosary. If you like, you can look that up or you can make up your own. How about that? Whatever speaks to you with the Divine Mother and the Ten Sephiroth, you can recite the rosary as you look at Lady Strength. So what you're doing when you do that is you are bringing devotion, repetition, and weaving your desires through your devotional practice, through all 10 sephirot, through the subconscious. So that's something you might consider doing. I always find this beautiful on the image of Mary here at the feet. Look here. The Divine Mother is got her foot over the serpent's neck here and head, right? The, the serpent's still alive. Right? The serpent's eating this fruit. The serpent has the fruit in its mouth. And she is gently controlling it and holding it in place. So it, we don't suppress the desire nature. We raise it. We also don't just let it, we also don't just indulge it to the point that the animal nature is in control of everything. It's a balance. Okay, let's see here. So one other thing you might consider doing, and again, just consider it as you're visualizing it and going into your inner visualization of the core practice, Maybe you start to see the roses transform from red to pink and to one white rose. The, the point is, listen to your inner guidance and what occurs to you something occurs to you to explore, you should absolutely, absolutely explore that. And then make notes of it. This is an incredibly powerful practice if you choose to implement any of these or all of them for yourself. But the main point here is to listen to yourself 
and act on your intuition when it comes to working with the tarot keys, with Kabbalah. I want you guys to know that you are all amazing. Thank you for your brilliant light and wisdom. And it's an honor to walk the royal path with you. This concludes our outer class on the path of taste in the alchemical Kabbalah. The floor is now open for any questions or comments.